politics, religion and money. The three things you are not supposed to talk about in polite society. Well, for the written word, it seems one should not write about politics, religion, race or sex. Last year, across the US, there were over 3,000 instances of book bans in public school classrooms and libraries, covering around 1,500 unique titles. Unfortunately, book banning is not a new phenomenon. So in this video, we are going to look at what books are being banned and why, as well as who is doing the banning. But first, let's take a whistle-stop tour through the history of book banning, book burning, and even the killing of authors. In 212 BC, the Chinese emperor Shi Huangti is said to have buried alive 460 Confucian scholars and burned all the books in his kingdom. With all previous historical records destroyed, he thought history could be said to begin with him. In 35 AD, the Roman emperor Caligula opposed the reading of the Odyssey by Homer, written more than 300 years before, as he thought it was dangerous because it expressed Greek ideas of freedom. According to legend, in 640, the caliph Omar burned all 200,000 volumes in the Library of Alexandria in Egypt. In doing so, he said, if these writings of the Greeks agree with the Book of God, they are useless and need not be preserved. If they disagree, they are pernicious and ought to be destroyed. Between 1524 and 1526, thousands of copies of William Tyndale's English translation of the New Testament were printed in Germany and smuggled into England, where they were publicly burned in 1526. In 1536, Tyndale was arrested in Belgium, tried for heresy and strangled and burned at the stake. Church authorities insisted that the Bible would be available only in Latin and that only they would be able to read and interpret it. To that end, a hundred years later, Martin Luther's German translation of the Bible was burnt in Germany by order of the Pope. In 1559, Pope Paul IV established the Index Librorum Prohibitorum, which for more than 400 years was the definitive list of books that Roman Catholics were told not to read. It was the one of the most powerful censorship tools in the world. In 1614, Sir Walter Raleigh's book, The History of the World, was banned by King James I of England for being too saucy in criticising princes. 1859 saw Charles Darwin's Origin of the Species being published, outlining the theory of evolution. The book was banned from the Library of Trinity College, Cambridge, where Darwin had been a student. In 1925, Tennessee banned the teaching of the theory of evolution in schools. The law remained in force until 1967. The Origin of Species was also banned in Yugoslavia in 1935 and Greece in 1937 but curiously never added to the Roman Catholic's Index Liborum. 1859, George Eliot's novel Adam Bede was attacked as the vile outpourings of a lewd woman's mind, and the book was withdrawn from libraries in Britain. Between 1864 and 1959, Victor Hugo's novel Les Miserables was placed on the Index Liborum. 1885, a year after the publication of Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn, the Library of Concord, Massachusetts, decided to exclude the book from its collection. The committee making the decision said the book was rough, coarse and inelegant, dealing with a series of experiences not elevating, the whole book being more suited to the slums than to intelligent, respectable people. By 1907, it was said that Twain's novel had been thrown out of some library somewhere every year, mostly because its hero was said to present a bad example for impressionable young readers. In 1929, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was banned in the Soviet Union because of occultism. 1929 also saw Jack London's popular novel, Call of the Wild, being banned in Italy and Yugoslavia. In 1931, Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll was banned by the governor of Hunan province in China because, he said, animals should not use human language and it was disastrous to put animals and humans on the same level. In 1933, a series of massive bomb fires in Nazi Germany burned thousands of books written by Jews, communists and others, included were the works of Albert Einstein, Sigmund Freud, Ernest Hemingway, Helen Keller, Lenin, Jack London, Karl Marx, Stalin, Leon Trotsky and many, many more. In 1954, Mickey Mouse comics were banned in East Berlin because Mickey was said to be an anti-red rebel. 1959, after the protest by the White Citizens Council, The Rabbit's Wedding, a picture book for children showing a black bunny and a white bunny falling in love and getting married, was put on the reserved shelf in Alabama public libraries, which means that it was only available on request because it was thought to promote racial integration. 1960, we had D.H. Lawrence's novel Lady Chatterley's Lover, 
subject to a trial in England, in which Penguin Books was prosecuted for publishing an obscene book. During the proceedings, the prosecutor asked, Is it a book you would wish your wife or servant to read? Penguin won the case, and the book was allowed to be sold in England. Novels by Ernest Hemingway were banned in various parts of the world, such as Italy, Ireland and Germany in 1960. And in California, The Sun Also Rises was banned from schools in San Jose, and all of Hemingway's works were removed from Riverside School Libraries. In 1973, the school board in Drake, North Dakota, ordered the burning of 32 copies of Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse-Five for the use of profanity, and 60 copies of James Dickey's Deliverance for references to homosexuality in the 1980s. The London County Council in England banned the use of Beatrix Potter's children's classic The Tale of Peter Rabbit and Benjamin Bunny from all London schools. The reason? The stories portrayed only middle-class rabbits. In 1982, the US Supreme Court overtly addressed school books in a case involving a group of students who sued a New York school board for removing books by authors like Kurt Vonnegut and Langston Hughes that the board deemed anti-American, anti-Christian, anti-Semitic and just plain filthy. The court stated local school boards may not remove books from school libraries simply because they dislike the ideas contained in those books. So, First Amendment rights upheld, problem solved in the US at least, right? Nothing is that simple. In 83, members of the Alabama State Textbook Committee called for the rejection of the diary of Anne Frank because it was a real downer. It was also challenged for offensive references to sexuality. In 1987, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou was removed from the required reading list for Wake County, North Carolina, because of a scene in which the author, at the age of seven and a half, is raped. 1988 saw Salman Rushdie's The Satanic Verses, which some critics said blasphemed Islam, being burned repeatedly by Muslims in the United Kingdom. In October, India became the first of several countries in the world to ban the novel. In 1989, the Supreme Leader of Iran declared a fatwa against Rushdie, resulting in several failed assassination attempts on the author and attacks on connected individuals, including the murder of Japanese translator Hitoshi Igarashi who was stabbed to death in 1991. In August 2022, an attack on Rushdie left him with a loss of sight in one eye and the use of one hand. In August 1992, during the Bosnian War, Serbian troops shelled the National Library in Sarajevo. They destroyed between 1.5 million and 3 million volumes. It was one of the worst book burnings in modern history. Soldiers shot at anyone who tried to save the books. In May 2012, Urshad Manji, a reform-minded Muslim, toured Malaysia to promote her book Allah, Liberty and Love. In Kuala Lumpur, government officials raided bookstores to confiscate copies of the book and eventually banned it. In the US in 2012, people demanded the removal of Toni Morrison's Beloved from the public library shelves, claiming the novel was sexually explicit and objecting to depictions of violence and the novel's religious viewpoint. In 2013, Islamist insurgents in the African nation of Mali set fire to a library in Timbuktu and incinerated 4,000 ancient manuscripts. The damage would have been worse, but a quick-thinking librarian had organised the removal of hundreds of thousands of manuscripts to safety. In Pakistan, in 2013, spokesmen for the organisations that represent the nation's tens of thousands of private schools announced bans on Ayam Malala, a girl who stood up for education and was shot by the Taliban, claiming it showed insufficient respect for Islam. In the US in 2019, people demanded the removal of Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale from public library shelves. Complainants objected to profanity and vulgarity and sexual overtones in the text. Also in 29 and in the US, people demanded the removal of J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series from public libraries. Complainants objected to depictions of magic, witchcraft and actual curses and spells in the text. They also disliked the characters' use of nefarious means to achieve their goals. Looking at many of these historical examples, it becomes clear that the purpose of book banning was about control, driven by a fear of change in the social order, and this was a way to marginalise the views of minority groups in society. These reasons have not really changed. 
book banning is seemingly still rooted in fear and ignorance and is inextricably linked to other efforts to restrict free speech, choice and control over one's body, political and civil rights, public protests and more. The Atlantic reported that 52% of the books challenged or banned in the last 10 years feature so-called diverse content, which some may not consider as mainstream. So they may explore issues such as race, religion, gender identity, sexual orientation, mental illness and disability. So to emphasise this point, let's look at the most challenged books in the US in 2022. Why am I focusing on the US when I live in the UK? Simply because unlike the US, the UK does not have a central national database of books that are challenged as the US does. This does not mean that books are not being challenged in the UK. In fact, an article from The Guardian shows that this is a growing issue in the UK. And I'll link that down below. OK, let's get back to the most challenged books of 2022, according to the American Library Association, or ALA. In first place is Genderqueer by Maya Kababi for LGBTQIA plus content claimed to be sexually explicit. In second place was All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson for LGBTQIA plus content claimed to be sexually explicit. In third place was The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison for depiction of sexual abuse claimed to be sexually explicit. In fourth place, we have Flamer by Mike Curato for LGBTQIA plus content claimed to be sexually explicit. And then we have two books tied for fifth, which are Looking for Alaska by John Green for LGBTQIA plus content claimed to be sexually explicit and The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chabotsky for depictions of sexual abuse LGBTQIA plus content, drug use, profanity, and claim to be sexually explicit. Noticing a trend? In 2022, 30% of all book bans include characters of colour and themes of race and racism. 30% represent LGBTQ plus identities, and 6% include a transgender character. I want to share something that Kate Messner wrote, who's the author of The Seventh Wish, whose protagonist has an older sibling grappling with addiction. On her blog, she wrote, when we say this book is inappropriate, we're telling those children, your situation, your family, your life is inappropriate. So I ask, what impact does this have? In a May 2023 Ipsos NPR poll, 65% of Americans stated that they oppose book bans by school boards and 69% oppose book bans by state lawmakers. And yet book bans continue to proliferate. Parent and community-led advocacy groups are seemingly driving the number of book bans, with three national advocacy groups being particularly prominent, with 87% of book bans occur in school districts where one of these three groups are present. This sounds like a large group of parents mobilising for what they believe, but is it? In May 2023, an analysis of book challenges by the Washington Post connected 66% of over 1,000 challenges to just 11 individuals. In August 2023, the Tampa Bay Times also documented the influence of two individuals in challenging hundreds of books in Florida. This means in a country with a population of around 340 million people, less than 20 people are responsible for a significant proportion of all the book bans. That's, that's simply preposterous. So it would seem that a large number of book bans are being implemented by a very small number of individuals supported by these national advocacy groups. According to an Ipsos poll in 2023, only 7% of parents believe books should be removed at the objection of a single parent. And yet this is what seems to be happening in many, many instances. As the ALA has stated, Challenges do not simply involve a person expressing a point of view, rather they are an attempt to remove material from the curriculum or library, thereby restricting the access of others. As such, they are a threat to the freedom of speech and choice. So what can we do? Read these banned books. Go out and buy them, borrow them, read them, talk about them. And to that end, MJ from Reading This Life has set the challenge to read 24 banned books in 2024, which I will be taking part in. Join us if you fancy that challenge. I will link MJ's announcement video below. I'm also going to link to a video by Jess from Stalking Kafka, who did a great video on the whys of book banning, which I suggest you check out. Shortly, I'll put out a video of the 24 banned books I am planning to read next year. But if you want to start planning your own reading, I will put a link to a Harper's Bazaar article, which lists 
all the currently banned books in each US state. It is a mind-bogglingly long list, as well as links to the ALA's top 10 lists for the past 20 years. I'm also going to link a few videos of booktubers who are also taking part in the 24 in 24 challenge, so you can see what books they are planning to read. With the thousands of books that have been banned, there is a lot to choose from. And finally, I want to leave you with the following quote from Pat Scales, who was the former chair of ALA's Intellectual Freedom Committee. Censorship is about control. Intellectual freedom is about respect.